So in today's web dev tip, we're going to take a look at another JavaScript coding challenge in Edibit. And this one is all about adding up the numbers from a single number. So probably easiest to explain this one with the examples. So we're going to be writing a function that accepts an argument, which is a number. And what we need to do is add all of those numbers up that can, are contained within that digit. So for four, for example, we want to add one, two, three, and four, uh, which should give us 10. And the same sort of thing for 13 as well. We're going to add up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and that should give us 91 and so on. So this probably isn't something you'd get asked at interview, but it is quite an interesting challenge uh, and it starts to make you think about how you can handle these kind of uh, scenarios. So let's go on and have a look at the code. Um, we've just got a simple uh, function set up at the moment. So I'm going to show you the simple way to do this first and probably the best way. And then we'll look at a more complicated example using some of uh, JavaScript's more advanced features. So the best way to approach this is just to have a running total variable and then have a for loop of some description that just goes through each of the numbers, uh, counting up to the uh, number argument provided, uh, and then just add that to the sum. So let me show you what that might look like. So we'll have a total uh, variable, like a sum variable that we're going to keep track of the uh, total with. And then we'll use for loop and we'll just use a simple uh, C style for loop and we'll set an index uh, variable and we'll probably set that as one because we don't need to count zero in this example. And this will be the number that we're going to be adding to total. Uh, so we'll keep going while i is less than or equal to the num that's been provided. And then we'll increment i uh, at each iteration of the for loop. And then for each iteration, all we're going to do is just add i to the total. And then at the end of the function, just return the total. And if we check that with the tests that we've got built in for the function, uh, we should find that they're all passing uh, for the code that we've just written uh, for the function. There we go, you can see all the tests have passed. So there's that first example of 10 and the second one of 91 and a few other tests as well, which have all passed, which is good. So this is probably the easiest to read because you can see exactly what's going on. We've got some well-named variables uh, and we're just returning the total from this add up function. But here's another way that you could do it uh, if you like to use crazy JavaScript uh, uh, features. And the feature we're going to use, we actually covered this in a web dev tip uh, a few weeks ago. So make sure you have a look at that if you're confused about this particular way of doing things. And we're going to use the array from uh, method to actually generate a new array of values. And then we're just going to reduce those down into the total that we need. So I'm going to separate this out into a, a separate function just to show you uh, how you could organize this code if you're going to reuse it in different parts of your app. So let's say we'll create a new function and we'll say uh, get all numbers as array, for example. And we're going to pass in that same number argument into there. And we're just going to return the array uh, dot from uh, method, or the result of the array dot from method, I should say. And we can generate an array of a certain length by uh, passing in a, an object with a length property uh, to the from method. And I'm just going to pass in that num argument, which is uh, what we've provided as the argument to this new function. And then the second argument you can pass to the from method is actually a mapping function and it'll take each of those items in turn and map them to something else. So each of the uh, items will be undefined to start off with. So I'm not going to actually access that item itself, uh, but I can access its index property very much like we did in the for loop up here. And I can actually just return the index uh, value uh, plus one because we'll start at zero. And that should give us the numbers from one to whatever number is provided as an argument. So as I say, if that's a bit confusing, make sure you check out the array from uh, tutorial we did a few weeks ago. I'll put a link in the description below. But this function should now give us that array of numbers from one to whatever the number is that's been provided. So let's use that in our add up function. So I'm just going to uh, get that array of numbers to start off with. Uh, so I'll just say array of numbers is a new constant and we'll call the get all uh, numbers as array uh, function and just pass it in that num, which is the argument that's passed into the add up function. And then all we need to do is uh, return uh, the array of numbers. Uh, and then we're going to call the reduce function on that. Again, there's a tutorial that we did a few weeks ago on reduce, if you're not sure how this works. And we'll call the accumulator total as we did before with the for loop. And We'll call each of the items in the reduce iteration as number. And so all we're going to do from reduce is just return 
uh, total plus number. Let's just uh, put this on another line so you can see it all in one go. And also we'll just make sure that the total is initialized as zero, which we'll just get our brackets in the right place there. And that will just ensure that total, uh, the accumulator for the reduce function is just set as zero uh, when we're adding up all of these numbers together. So this is going to go through each of those numbers in the array that this uh, other separate function will create. And we will then uh, be able to uh, add those together to get our total. So let's actually just uh, click the button here to run the tests again. And hopefully that should all work for us. And you can see the tests have all passed and now we've completed the challenge. So the only advantage of doing this really is we're creating a separate function that might be able to re be reused through other parts of our code. But you can see from the code that we wrote uh, that it's a little bit more complex and a little bit harder to understand uh, what's going on with the functions that we've created rather than the for loop, which was very simple to read. Uh, and it was very obvious as what it was trying to do. So that's the end of this Edibit challenge and the end of the tutorial. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.